Hi, my name is Duncan. In this video, I'll give you a quick overview and demonstration of our safe to tow system. But before I do, I'll walk you through the mechanics of your electric brakes. So I've got a 10 inch backing plate here. And this is a device that mounts on the end of your axles and carries all of your braking equipment. So as you can see on the backing plate, we've got two brake shoes. We've got a leading shoe and a trailing shoe. And I can tell the two apart because the leading shoe is actually slightly smaller than the trailing shoe. So this highlights the fact that the backing plates are actually handed, i.e. you've got a left-hand side backing plate and a right-hand side backing plate. And I can tell this is a left-hand side backing plate because it's got the letter L stamped on the bottom here. So as I say, on the backing plate we've got our two brake shoes and between the two shoes at the bottom is the adjuster. So by winding the adjuster in and out, we can adjust the clearance between the brake shoes and the brake drum. The last component on our assembly here is the brake magnet, which is actually an electromagnet, and it's the item that the brake controller in your car is energising to activate the brakes. So when we put power on the magnet, the magnet sticks to the rotating brake drum, drags the lever arm around, and as you can see, it forces the brake shoe into the brake drum. I'll add a side note here, because I'm an engineer and I think it's pretty interesting. So when the leading shoe is forced into the brake drum, it's not actually the leading shoe that does much of the braking. The dragging force that's applied to the leading shoe is actually transferred through the adjuster and it's the trailing shoe that does the majority of the braking. This is referred to as a duo servo mechanism and it's actually a big mechanical amplifier which relies on the leading shoe to operate the trailing shoe. And this highlights one of the shortcomings of drum brakes. Because if I change the friction characteristic of the leading shoe surface by just a small amount, then I'll affect the overall braking performance by a large amount. I.e., if this surface becomes contaminated and more slippery, then the overall braking performance will be significantly degraded. Similarly, if this surface becomes contaminated and more sticky, then the brakes will be really grabby. This explains why new brakes need to be burnished or bedded in, and this explains why old brakes, which have got rust contamination on the surface of the drums, are really grabby. An interesting side note. Despite what I just said, electric drum brakes are still pretty reliable, but they're certainly exposed to significant wear and tear. For example, the brake magnet permanently runs on the inside face of the brake drum, and by design it's intended to have a fair amount of free play. So plenty of wear and tear there. But probably the most vulnerable part of the assembly is the brake magnet wires, which on any vehicle have to run from the moving suspension up to the chassis, so they're vulnerable to damage. If you do already own a caravan or trailer yourself, go outside and have a look at the condition of your wiring now. You might be surprised. But enough of that, let's have a look at the safe to tow system. This is a bit that I love to talk about because I don't have to try so hard to remember my lines. The safe to tow system is really simple. It's just a unit that mounts on the underbody of your caravan or trailer and a small Bluetooth transceiver module that communicates with the free brake monitor app on your smartphone or tablet. And that's it. So on my demonstration board here, I've got a mock-up of a dual axle electric brake system. And at this end of the board, you'll recognize the brake magnets. In the middle of the board, we've got the trailer plug connection. And on this side of the trailer plug connection, we've got the electric brake controller which is normally mounted in your car. Now your brake controller may or may not look like this. Perhaps you've got a Taconcha or a Heyman Reese or some other brand of brake controller. That's fine, our safe to tow system is compatible with all types of brake controllers. Now coming out of any brake controller, there'll be three circuits that run down to the trailer plug connection. A blue, a white and a red. The blue wire is actually the wire that carries the power to energise the brake magnets and activate the brakes. The white wire is a negative or an earth circuit, and the red wire is your brake light circuit. So these three circuits run through your trailer plug connection and along the chassis of your caravan or trailer. And at some point on the chassis of your caravan or trailer, the blue and the white circuits will splice into separate circuits that run out to each brake magnet. So when we install a safe to tow system, essentially we locate the splice connection and that's where we drop in our monitoring unit. And that allows our monitoring unit to measure the electrical current through each brake magnet. And that's what we display on the brake monitor app. 
Now you don't need to be an electrician to interpret the information displayed on the brake monitor app. On my demonstration board here, I've got my brake controller configured for manual control. So when I wind up the adjuster, I can manually apply power to the electric brake system. And on the brake monitor app, we can see we've got four magnets, we should have four bar graphs. So in a one second glance, we've got peace of mind that electrically, our electric brake system is working correctly. Now if at some point through the day you pick up a stick or a rock off the road and you break one of your brake magnet wires, so I'll simulate that here by disconnecting it from the brake monitoring unit. Again, we apply the brakes and in a one second glance we can instantly see that we've lost power to one brake magnet. So in its most basic form, that's what we intended the safe to toe system to do. To give you peace of mind that electrically, your electric brake system was working correctly. But it goes much further than that. I'll just correct my fault over here. Because it's a real time monitoring system, we can actually observe the operation of our brake controller, which makes it much easier to test and adjust. Irrespective of what sort of brake controller you have, typically they're installed in a pretty inconvenient location. And at any point in time, it's difficult to know where the brake controller is set, particularly if you bump it every time you get in the car. And when you do make an adjustment to your brake controller, the only way to know the effect of the adjustment is to feel it through your seat. But once you give people a visual reference, you can now see the effect of your adjustment. And you no longer have to worry so much about the specific position of your adjuster, because at any point in time, you've got a visual reference that you can come back to. So you can quickly work out for your vehicle where your brake controller should be set for any given road condition, such as wet roads, dry roads, or city travel. Another benefit of the system is that it provides an easy way to test your breakaway system. How do you test your breakaway system? You pull your breakaway key and then you've got to go and jack up a wheel and try and spin it? My demonstration board here doesn't include a breakaway circuit, but at the end of the day what your breakaway system is doing is putting power on the blue wire to energise all of the magnets and engage all of the brakes. So with the safe to tow system installed, testing your breakaway system is easy. You pull your breakaway key, you have a look at your mobile device, and you should see all of your bar graphs reading maximum. You can then also load test the breakaway battery by ensuring the brake magnets stay energised for a minimum of 15 minutes. But the feature of the safe to tow system that our customers seem to like the most is the ability to monitor the mechanical performance of your brakes. So how do we do that? We can do that because the brake magnets contain a coil of copper wire and the resistance of that coil changes with temperature. So if we've got a difference in temperature between the brake magnets, it's reflected as a difference in reading on our bar graphs. And we know that at any point in time, all of the bar graphs should always read the same. If we see the bar graph starting to read differently, we've got a direct indication of a fault. So mechanically, that could obviously be a faulty brake or an incorrectly adjusted brake, but even a flat tyre or a faulty wheel bearing, anything that could cause a difference in temperature between the wheel assemblies will be reflected as a difference in reading on the bar graphs. If some of you are now concerned that I might be suggesting you should be driving around with your mobile device in your face, I'm not. Once the novelty of owning the system has worn off, you might only spend 10 seconds a day looking at your brake monitor. Five seconds as part of your pre-starts before you hit the road to confirm that all your brake magnets are connected and working. And then through the day, if you go through some heavy braking or you touch the brakes and something feels different on the back end, you might have another five second glance at your mobile device to confirm that all the bar graphs are reading the same and that all your wheel temperatures are uniform. So that's a pretty brief overview of our safe to tow system. If you're looking for more information, check out the videos on our how-to page where we walk through the installation process and also provide some more information on the brake monitor app. All our manuals and technical documentation are also contained on our downloads page, so feel free to check that out. But if you've still got questions, give us a call or shoot us an email, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.